Hello and welcome to Cloud Tech 10 for the 18th of December 2017. I'm Mark and I'm going to tell you all the latest news about Microsoft Azure from the past week in 10 minutes or less. The Azure Bot and the Language Understanding, or LUIS services, are now generally available. The Azure Bot service enables developers to create conversational interfaces, while the Language Understanding service helps developers create customized natural interactions. The two services can be used independently, but a great use case is to use both together. Creating a bot using the Azure Bot service is very easy to do. At this URL, there's a walkthrough of creating a simple bot that uses language understanding to allow requests to be made using natural language. You can get the code for the following demo from that page if you want to try this yourself. First in the Azure portal, add a new item from the AI and Cognitive Services section of the Azure Marketplace and select the Web App Bot option. To create our bot, we fill in the details on this form. We give the bot a name, choose a subscription, a resource group, and an Azure region. We can choose from a free or a standard pricing tier. So let's choose free for our demo. From here, we can choose from a selection of pre-made bot templates to get us started with our project. We can choose Node.js or C-Sharp. For this example, we'll choose the C-Sharp version of the language understanding template. The bot will be deployed into an Azure App Service, so we just need to create one here. And we'll enable application insights so we can see metrics related to our bot's performance. Once the bot has been deployed, open it in the portal and go to test in web chat. We already have a fully functioning bot with basic capabilities. If I send a simple message like hello, the bot will respond having recognized that this is a greeting. Now let's make the bot do something else. We'll access the language understanding service at www.lewis.ai. Sign in with the same account we use for Azure and we'll see that an app for our bot has already been created. I'll select the app and we'll see the intents, which are the goals or actions we want our bot to be able to interpret. The default ones allow the bot to respond to greetings, help and cancel requests, and the none intent handles everything else. The bot we are building will create and display notes for us. So we need to add some intents to handle that scenario. Language understanding comes with a selection of predefined intents, which we can access through the pre-built domains option. If we scroll down through this list, we'll find that there is a note domain we can use. So let's click on add domain. Now, if I return to the list of intents, I'll see that there are now a number of new ones that have been added that relate to notes. For this demo, we'll only implement a couple of these. So I'll just quickly clean up this list and delete the note intents that we're not going to implement. We'll be left with the notes.readaloud and notes.create intents along with the original four. Next we click on the train button here which will take our new intents and generate a new machine learning model for our bot to use. So that the bot can make use of that the model needs to be published which we do by clicking publish and then publish to production slot. Now we'll need to add some code to our bot to handle the new intents that we've added. Back in the Azure portal choose the build option. You can download the source code for your bot and modify it with your favorite code editor or upload to a source control system. It's also possible to edit the bot code directly from here. So we'll do that now by clicking the open online code editor link. We're going to paste in some ready-made additional code Code. First, some code to define a class for the notes. So these objects will hold the title and text of our notes. Then we provide code to handle the two new intents. This code handles the scenario for creating a new note, prompting the user to provide a title and note content. And this code handles the scenario for reading back the list of notes that have been created. Now we need to build our bot to incorporate the new code. We can do this from here by right clicking on this build.cmd file and choosing run from console. This will build and deploy an updated version of our bot. Once that's finished, flip back to the Azure portal and back to the test in web chat section. Let's try it out. As we're using Using language understanding, we can use natural sentences to talk to the bot. Let's ask it to create a new note. It asks us to give the note a title, so we'll call it shopping list, and we need to tell it what we want the note to say. We'll remind ourselves to buy milk and cereal. I want to create another note, so let's just type that. Again, it asks for the title of the note and what we want the note to say. Now, I'll ask the bot to read my notes back to me, and there's the two notes that I created. The Azure France regions are now available in preview for all customers. The France Central region offers access to Azure availability zones, providing four isolated locations within the region, offering redundant power, cooling, and networking to provide the highest levels of availability, resiliency, and continuity. Additional redundancy can be provided whilst maintaining data residency by creating paired resources in the geographically separate France South region. More details about the Azure France regions can be found at this URL. Azure Archive Storage is now generally available. With Archive Storage, you get the lowest cost for storage, starting from 0.002 of a dollar per gigabyte per month. This comes at the expense of a higher retrieval latency and retrieval cost, but this tier is designed for data that is rarely accessed, such as raw original data that needs to be preserved after processing, compliance data, and archival data. With the addition of archive storage, Azure Storage now has three tiers, hot, cool, and archive. The hot tier is the default for data that is in active use and read or written frequently. Cool storage has lower storage costs and higher access costs compared to the hot tier, and is suitable for data that is less frequently accessed. Archive storage offers the lowest possible storage cost, but higher access costs, and is designed for rarely accessed data. Tiering can be set at the object level. For example, here in the Azure portal, I can see this object in a blob store, and by going to the object properties, I can switch between hot, cool, and archive. You can also set the tier 
clear programmatically using the Azure SDKs for .NET, Java, Python, or Node.js, or using PowerShell, the Azure CLI, or the Azure REST API. Data in the archive tier needs to be rehydrated before it can be accessed, a process which can take up to 15 hours to complete. So you need to ensure that meets with your data recovery needs before opting to store data in the archive tier. An update has been made to the Azure Monitor feature that allows you to send diagnostic data to event hubs. In the Azure Monitor, you can select the Diagnostics Settings option to see the current status for diagnostics across all of your resources. When you select a resource and enable diagnostics, one option is to stream diagnostic data to an event hub. Previously, when configuring this, you would choose a namespace and then an event hub would be created automatically for you. This would result in multiple event hubs being created for each of the resources. Now you can choose a specific event hub to stream to. This makes it easier to process the information in event hubs as you no longer need to read from multiple event hubs and can route all log types to a single event hub, giving you only one source that you need to listen to for new data. The Azure Site Recovery Deployment Planner for VMware and Hyper-V is now generally available. These tools help you to understand your on-premises environment and the Azure compute and storage requirements to help you successfully implement Azure Site Recovery, replication, testing, and failover. The tool doesn't require any on-premises components to be installed and does not impact the performance of existing production servers. The tool is able to perform assessments for compatibility and network bandwidth, determine Azure infrastructure requirements, and Azure cost estimates. The tool generates reports that can be opened with Microsoft Excel, providing you with a summary of your on-premises environment, recommendations, virtual machines to storage placement, compatible or incompatible virtual machines, and costing. <laughs>